Hello and welcome back to the channel. You join me in the beautiful village of Great Eastham and I'm back at the Sun Inn pub, which I've been to a few times because on a Monday they do a five pound lunch and it, this is a beef something or other with mashed potato. God, it looks really good. So I'm gonna tuck in and then talk to you a little bit about this Royal Enfield Continental GT. Oh, I finished that in about five seconds. I was so hungry. I, I didn't have any breakfast this morning. I was saving myself for this. Oh my God, it was good. Uh, and the chap said, it's sticky toffee pudding for pudding. So uh, I couldn't resist that either. So that'll be on its way in a moment. Pint of Peretti, beautiful. To me, this is what this kind of motorcycle is all about. It's about taking a nice gingerly ride on a Sunday or a Monday like it is today and just taking it easy, taking in the scenery, the smells around you, uh, the beauty of the British countryside or wherever you happen to live if you buy one of these bikes and stop off for a lovely quintessential pub lunch at somewhere like this. What more could you ask for? Now, I don't normally do videos like this, and you'll know that if you watch the channel, it's mainly just reviews. But I've already reviewed this bike, and that was back in April 2022. It's now March 2024, and I've not ridden this bike since. I didn't want to do a, a full-on review again, because, well, we've already done it. And this is the sort of thing I think this bike is all about, so why not use it? as it's meant to be used and see how it copes with that kind of function. And I can tell you, this is the perfect bike for doing this sort of thing. For a Sunday ride, it's got plenty of character, beautiful sounding engine, although it is rather quiet. I would definitely change the exhaust, as I've said a million times. It's not the most comfortable bike in the world, so I wouldn't ride this bike on a really long journey. If I was going to do a longer journey, I would probably choose the Interceptor because it's a bit more comfortable. The riding position of this uh, with the way the handlebars are because it's more of a cafe racer style is less comfortable but it is magnificent. And this is the same colour as the one I had last time. It's that sort of British racing green, gr green? green which is a beautiful colour. It's a perfect shade of green. I did a similar sort of video to this on the Interceptor when I last rode one of those. I just took it to a local pub to mine and had a pint, uh, but I'm having lunch this time. But I think I like things about this bike that I don't like on the Interceptor and vice versa. If I could have the fuel tank of this bike on the Interceptor, I think that would be a pretty perfect bike for me. I really would love that. But I definitely do prefer the Interceptor overall, mainly just because of the riding position. They're very similar bikes and the Interceptor seems to be more popular and that perhaps is one of those reasons but this bike is really good at capturing the essence of what a motorcycle is all about the beautiful noise of that parallel twin it's a very beautiful thing to ride it really is and it's it's so easy to ride as well it's surprisingly easy because the clutch is so light uh, it's easy around town My sticky toffee pudding has arrived. So normally when I eat out, I don't talk while I eat. I literally just inhale my food. Bike. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. See, that's what Royal Enfields do. People compliment them because they're lovely. Uh, but this food, wow. Unbelievable, so good. I must say sticky toffee pudding has to be the best dessert in the world. I tend not to have puddings when I go out for lunch or dinner, but when it's sticky toffee pudding, I can't really resist it, so I had to say yes. Uh, but that just shows you, as it was delivered, um, someone walked into the pub and said, nice bike. How was the sticky toffee? Oh, amazing. Plate, yes? So good, yeah. <laughs> Would you like anything else? That's all, cheese? thank you. No, I'm, I'm all right for the moment. Thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. <sighs> but yeah. That just shows you that this bike, it does attract attention. And for a bike of this price, I don't think you'll find anything that has as much sense of occasion, 
uh, that draws as much attention as this. Even just looking at that shot before I press play, it looks so good. And that does it like a, a very satisfying backdrop, so I think it's going to come out nicely. But I'm looking forward to getting back on this bike just to ride it home because it is really fun. And for six and a half thousand pounds in the UK, I don't think you can get much better apart from the Interceptor and perhaps the BSA Gold Star. I really enjoyed that bike as well. But I do think overall I prefer this engine because once you put an aftermarket exhaust on it, this thing does sound unbelievable. It really is a good sounding bike. On Thursday, it's currently Monday filming this, the day after St. Patrick's Day. And on Thursday, I'm off to Portugal to film with three new BMWs. And then in a couple of weeks time, I am going to a launch of a new Royal Enfield. So keep your guesses in the comments of what that is going to be, but I'm really excited to go on this launch. It's an all new bike. So that's probably a bit of a giveaway. Um, we haven't ridden it yet because no one in the UK has ridden it thus far. It's not in the dealers yet. It will be very soon, but it looks fantastic. I mean, I've seen it at the shows and it does seem interesting. And the engine that's in it is an all new engine, which I think could be a really exciting opportunity for Royal Enfield to put it into some more different models, some modern classics like the Hunter and upgrade it. Uh, I've probably given it away without saying it, but I'm not going to say it. You can guess in the comments below. Well, I hope you're enjoying this more laid back video so far. And if you are, if you could hit subscribe, that would really help us out. It's free to do so. And we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. So to reach that number would be a dream come true. And as I said, if you're enjoying the video, leave a like, leave your comments down below. If you've ridden one of these Continental GTs, what do you think of it? Because as a bike that represents value for money, but also incredible style and rideability, this is one of the best options out there. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on this motorcycle. And I recently re-watched my old review of this bike from 2022. And always when you look back, you think, oh, I could have done this better, I could have done that better. But I did say in that video, um, leave your comments if you want me to go to a pub and do a video like this. But I didn't have enough time when I had that bike. So uh, it had to go back a few days later and the weather wasn't great. So I don't think I could get out on it again. Um, which is why I've sort of asked to have it again, not only just to do this video, but also I've done a video comparison between this and the new Norton Commando 961. And as I said in that video, um, it sounds like I've gone mad comparing a bike that's 10 grand more. Uh, but to add to that as well, because since making that video, I've gone on the factory tour around Norton. Again, that'll be another video coming out. So I don't know what order they're all going to come out in. Um, I'll decide that when I'm editing them. But what the guy who toured me around the uh, factory said is that they only produce 8,000 Nortons a year. And in comparison to a lot of the bigger brands, which are producing something like 10,000 bikes a day, so million a year, you know, or more, like Royal Enfield, is that they've got such a massive economy of scale and they're building it in somewhere like India where manufacturing costs are less expensive. But if you're producing bikes at that volume, it is a lot cheaper to do so. But when you're producing things on a lower scale in Britain, where everything's handmade, pretty much everything, then obviously it's going to be more expensive. And it really did open my eyes and go, okay, well, now I can see why this bike is this price. But if you haven't got the money for one of those Nortons, this is a brilliant option. It doesn't have the character the Norton has, but it's pretty darn impressive for six and a half grand. I haven't really made a plan of any sort for this video. I've literally just done it all off the cuff. Most of our videos are all off the cuff anyway, but I tend to write a list of things I want to cover in a review, but we don't write a script or anything like that. Uh, but this video really, I haven't just planned anything. But just sitting here in this quaint village uh, and just listening to the birds, it's so good for your mental health. Um, just to get out, whether it's on a motorbike or even just for a walk for half an hour, 
as long as you get outside every day, I think that's so important, just to get some fresh air, listen to the birds, uh, especially in the countryside. If you're in a city, everything's so busy, it's stressful. Uh, I don't know how people live in cities, to be honest. It's not for me. I'm, I'm a country boy through and through. Uh, I just love being by the countryside. Now, I think this Continental GT is not quite how I remember it being back when I last rode it two years ago. It, to me, back then, I, I remember it being really uncomfortable. And it's nowhere near as uncomfortable as I remember it being. After about half an hour, your palms do get, start to get a bit sore because most of your weight is over on your hands because of the riding position. Partially because I'm six foot one, I'm more leaned over because of my height. So it puts more pressure on my wrists, etc. But it was nowhere near as uncomfortable as I remember it being. It's got plenty of grunt. Um, now, when I first started reviewing different bikes, I didn't have much to compare them off because I hadn't ridden much, but now I've ridden a lot of different bikes. So I can see each bike more individually rather than comparing it to one or two bikes I'd ridden. <sighs> oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> Where's the yes. cameraman gone? Oh no, yes, me, I, I do it all myself. Oh, do you? Yes. <laughs> Um, no, I just uh, kind of run back and forth and press play and stop. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a Royal Enfield. Oh, that's an old one then. Yeah. It's actually brand new. Oh, is it? Yeah, but it's, it looks like an old bike. But they're lovely. They're really good bikes. They're good value for money as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. You should have brought a helmet with you. I should have brought a spare one. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Where do you come from on that then? Yeah, so not too far. Yeah, where do you buy these from? They're um, made in Birmingham, are they? Or? They they used to be made in England, but they're made in India now. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you can there's dealers all over the place. Yeah. Um, but this isn't actually mine. It's uh, yeah. I I do bike reviews on YouTube, so oh, right. I've got it for a couple of weeks. But yeah, it's a nice bike. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Yes, just YouTube. pointing at me, yeah, all on YouTube. Yeah. So, uh, well, you will slightly be in it at the minute. Do you mind being on camera? Yeah, sorry, <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> have a nice day. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this video as much as I have because well, it's been lovely just to relax with a nice pint of beer, a lovely pub lunch, and watch the world go by with this beautiful Royal Enfield. So, as I say, if you've enjoyed it, please do subscribe for plenty more coming up, and we'll see you in the next video.